best, better taste, better nutrition, better eggs. Today on Creative Juice, we've got oodles of bridal favors guaranteed to make a great impression on any wedding guest. From the incredibly edible, like chocolate hearts and unique packaged treats, to the extraordinarily imaginative, like a message in a bottle, custom porcelain ornaments, and show-stopping wine stoppers. We're walking you down the aisle for all this and much, much more, right now on Creative Juice. Bridal favors are a way of letting your guests know that you appreciate them sharing in your special day. And when you need a lot of favors for all your guests, affordable is key. So we have a few ideas to show you today, and we're going to be starting with this one. A charm thank you note makes a great wedding favor, and they can be personalized in any color palette, and you can choose charms that are near and dear to your heart. I love adding the little extra detail. Just tie a knot here. And then I'm gonna thread on this really cool leaf charm. I love that. Also got a little engagement ring charm that's so pretty. I'm gonna thread that on there too. What I love about it is being able to personalize a note to the guests right on the inside there. And the other great thing about it is it's so affordable. So I've just got a bow right there, trim up my edges. And I've got these really fun acetate sleeves. All you want to do is fold up your card and then just slide it right into that sleeve. It just adds a little extra oomph to it. They're very inexpensive. You have a little piece right here on the back. You peel back, fold it back, and now you've got one beautiful presentation and a lovely note on the inside. Look at that. Super pro looking. I love these. You know, Kath, more and more weddings are happening at destinations, like a golf course, mm -hmm. believe it or not. And this is a great party favor for your guests. First thing is we purchase these boxes. You can get them at party stores or even at stationery stores. Yep. And what we've done is, just with some hot glue, we just added some ribbon right around there. And off of the computer, we have our bride and groom with a nice little saying on the bottom here. I love how you use the funny sayings, like four with the golfing term. Why like, not? Make it fun, so you know? Cute. And then with a glue stick, we just glue stick it right on top here, added a little bit of grass that we got from the craft store, put it right down in there, added a golf ball and a tee, and look at that. Here's a couple other ones that we did. This one we did a little bit different with some punches and some scrapbooking paper. Just punch it out again with the glue stick, put it right on top. This is a different look, and you can coordinate these boxes and colors again with your wedding party, which is really nice. Here's a fun, fun tip. You can actually take white golf balls, drop them into a dye bath, leave them in there for about a half hour, pull them up, and you will have dyed golf balls. You need to make a rainbow amount of colors with this. Yeah. Super cool. Absolutely. A lot of brides and grooms are choosing to have their weddings at wineries, and mm. we've got a great idea for that. Yeah, like handmade wine stoppers like this one here. And all we're using is a drawer pull and a cork. So we got these drawer pulls at the hardware store. There's a lot of selections out there, so take a look. Drill right through the center of your cork, all the way up. And then your drawer pulls, of course, come with these screws. You're just gonna slide your screw right up in there, like so. You're gonna put your drawer pull right on top, and then cap it off with the provided screw here. And then, get a screwdriver, and just tighten it up. It's as simple as that, and of course, Kathy went the extra mile. Look what little she did. Little decoration. Mm -hmm. It's super easy. All I've got is a little piece of some silver wired ribbon here. And I'm just going to tie that right around the base. And then I've got some scrapbooking embellishments. I've just used an oval punch to create this burgundy kind of wine-colored oval piece of paper there. And I've got the letter G. This is just a scrapbooking letter. And this fun kind of curly Q metal piece. And I'm going to tie that on. What I love about this ribbon, you can just kind of curl it around your finger, and it kind of ends up looking like great vines. Yeah, it does. And don't forget, all the instructions on any one of these favors are on our website at DIYnetwork.com. So put that one right down there. We've got our curly silver grapevine, some flowers you can tie on and add some extra little ribbons there. It'd be gorgeous for like kind of a shabby country wedding. Oh, absolutely. Well, we have so much more to come, so we hope you stay tuned. Sweet 
treats and homemade packaging that will really make your favors rise to the occasion. Next on Creative Juice. Friday is the last day. Time is running out for your chance to win the 2010 H. With a jig. Give a burst of fresh juice. Friday is the last day. Time is running out for your chance to win the 2010 HGTV Dream Home. Go to HGTV.com and enter now. Glade Sense and Spray. Smart. It has a motion sensor, which means it goes off only when it senses movement. To give a burst of fresh Glade fragrance. Only when you need it. But it's not wasteful, because it won't go off again for another 30 minutes. Unless, of course, you press the boost button. Very smart. Motion activated sense and spray. Very smart. And yes, it's Glade. SC Johnson, a family company. It's another DIY Network Sweat Equity Quick Tip. Building a wet bar can... Let's give it a... Favors are always a big hit at weddings, and they're very cost-effective to make. And they make for great snacks later on in the evening. Mm. So let's start off with some chocolate. We made homemade chocolate hearts here that are going to be packaged up and given away as favors. And all we did was melt down some chocolate right inside the microwave and got these great molds. Pour it right in, let them cool down, and then you're just going to pop it out like that. Look at how nice that is. They're so pretty. To package these up, it's very easy. I've got these glassing envelopes here, and I've just gone in with a little rubber stamp, a little embossing powder, and I've embossed a sweet little bird right on the envelope. And it's nice. great, you can do any kind of design. You could do an initial like over here or the word thanks. After that, I've got a small tag that I printed, use that same oval punch from earlier, and a little piece of ribbon just to tie the whole thing up like this. It's a great packaging. It's mm -hmm. very simple. And different size bags for you can put three or four mm -hmm. in one bag or one little sweet one alone is great. Exactly. Here's another chocolate idea for some wedding favors. It's your very own homemade hot cocoa mix. First, you're gonna need to get yourself a big giant tub like this because we're gonna be making a lot of these. And you're gonna need some dry milk. Now this is gonna be 15 cups of dry milk. You're gonna pour it right inside your big plastic container. Woo, look at all that. <laughs> it's pretty dusty. Here's your next one. Pour it on in. We're gonna use about half of this, Kathy, because uh, half a box, cups. 15 cups. Then we're gonna pour in four cups of cocoa. You're gonna use four cups of sugar. Pour mm, that right in. My favorite part. And one little tiny teaspoon of salt. <laughs> so how much flavor can come out of one teaspoon it out does. of all this? You get, it just cuts the sweetness just a tiny bit. Okay, I'll believe it. Anyways, then you're gonna mix this all together. While you mix that up, I'm gonna show you about the packaging, and it's really easy. As soon as it's mixed, you just wanna put a little bit into a Ziploc baggie like this, and then we're gonna put it right into one of these muslin bags and package it to look just like this. And I've got a label here, and I've printed this on the computer, and you can see that I've got it reversed. That's because it's an iron-on transfer. And you can get these at any craft store or office supply store. Once it's transferred, it's gonna be going the right direction. Got my iron here. Go ahead and push down on that. Make sure you get the corners real good. Okay, so I have this very well blended here, and I'm just gonna fill up our plastic little baggie here. I'm gonna fill it up about half away, and each one of these baggies is gonna make a cup of cocoa. You're just gonna add some hot water to it, and you have yourself some instant delicious hot cocoa. I think I'm ready to peel my label. Just got it cooled down. There we go. That looks great. Why don't we tuck this right in there, Kath? Now all you gotta do is give it a little tag. And I've got a tag here that I printed and it's just got the instructions on it. Just gonna punch a hole. And tie that right on to the bag. 
It's as easy as that. A homemade yummy hot cocoa treat. I've got some other ones over here and we've just done the same technique, but just done different things like using the bride and groom's name and the initials here. I really love this idea because when your guests get back to the room, all they need is just a little hot water. It's so sweet. They're different. Here's another idea. If you didn't quite feel like making your own chocolates or your own cocoa mix, go to the store and buy your favorite treats and put them in these little tiny tins here. And you can just fill them up with your favorites. Look at this fall one here. Love we got that. some candy corn right in there. If you have a February wedding, you can put some hearts. Red hots, even. Red hots are good, too. And this, I think, is a really nice idea, too. Mm -hmm. You can put a saying or a poem right on top, too, which is very personal for bride Love and groom. That. They can yeah. pick something out and share it together. So there's another idea that we want to share with you, and all you're going to need is some grocery store cookies, and they're very simple to put together. All we're going to do is package them up in a little flat cellophane bag like this and just put a little paper fold on it. I've got this here. I'm just going to put two cookies in just slide a couple in like that and then we're ready for a little labeling that's right and the labeling's fun because what we've done is we've taken a piece of paper we've printed our bride and groom's name and the date on the bottom went through the printer once flipped it over went through the printer again with a nice little saying now you're going to do is fold it right in half got your cookies all right and put it right over the open part of the bag here there we go and we're gonna staple it right along this little bottom edge here. And there we go, our gorgeous front and our beautiful back. And that's why we ran it through the printer twice. So they're both right side up and you have something to look at on the front and on the back. I love this sweet treat. That's a great idea, but I have one more idea. Mm, what's that? And it's the idea that I want a cookie. Which flavor? Give me a uh, ginger snap. There we go, thanks. Stick around, because we got more sweet treats for you. Up next, how to light up your special day with unique candles and gorgeous ornaments. Coming up on Creative Juice. Fran Harris is going to change lives. You got to start listening. Introducing a brand new series about a life coach who transforms families from the chaos to the calm. Home Rules. Series premiere Monday, March 15th at 9, 8 central on HGTV. Take HGTV's Dream Home 2010 online tour right now at HGTV.com. Check out the Dream Home blog, then follow the superfan as she explores each room. All at HGTV.com. HGTV's Dream Home 2010, how the West will be won. Listen to what AquaDry waterproofing customers are saying. We had mold and water in our basement, and it really started to affect our health. It's so... Our diet. And you're just right at the top. So simple. And there you have it. They're as simple as that. Your mini seashell candles. a wedding during the winter holidays, why not put together a really easy personalized ornament to serve as your party favor? It's so simple to do. I'm going to be doing some embossing right onto this really great heart-shaped porcelain ornament. I've got a very pretty kind of ornate stamp, so I'm going to stamp right onto here. You won't really be able to see it until I sprinkle that powder on. Got that right down. Got a little bit of this kind of foresty green embossing powder. Really great color. Sprinkle that right on top of there. Wherever it lands, it's going to emboss. So you want to kind of give it a good tap. Now I'm ready to emboss. Now at this point, you may want to go in with a little clear coat just to protect the finish, make it last for years and years. Go ahead and get my powder back into my jar. I love doing this over a file folder. So you can just keep recycling the embossing powder right back in if you're doing a whole bunch of these in a row. 
makes it really handy that way. And I wanna show you about this really fun pin. It's a porcelain paint pin. It's a really great way to add your own personal touch to the ornament. these ornaments to your wedding. This is the last favor we have to show you and it's a message in a bottle. And for any of the favors that we've shown you today, just log on to our website at DIYnetwork.com. We're gonna be showing you how to make these next. Builder, spectacular mom. Nothing ever comes before those kids. She's Cindy Stumpo. This is construction. We're not making dolls. And she's tough as nails. Premieres Thursday, March 18th on HGTV. So the last favorite we want to show you is a message in a bottle. They can be customized to any color palette and they're perfect for a wedding at the beach. Now these bottles you can get at the craft store or a wedding supply store. And while you're at the craft store, pick up some sand. We have two different colors here. Now you're going to do is spoon it right inside your bottle like so. And we're just going to layer them up. Here's some nice tan, a little darker color right on top. And there you go. There's your base for your bottle. Once you've got the sand in, you want to add something decorative. And I've got some small shells here. You can buy them in large bags in bulk. And they're just so tiny and delicate. Got a long one here, some beautiful blue ones. Pop those right in. And you're saving that pearl for last, I, I am. can see. And I've got one pearl bead. And how cute is that just to plop that in and top it off with that? Now, with some sticky paper, we ran it through the computer and printer and just put the bride and groom's name. We got Rachel and Ben with the date on the bottom and a little sailboat. What's great about this, it's sticky paper, so you can just peel it and then stick it right in front of the bottle there. And it has their name front and center for everybody to see. I think we're ready for our message. We've printed a message onto some parchment paper and used some decorative scissors just to add a fun edge to it. We're gonna roll it up and stick it right in the top and a great trick to do that is just gently begin rolling it on the end of a paintbrush. Keeps it nice and tight. So it's a nice way to get a real nice even roll. Pull that off and plop it right in there. And you can see that we've added a decorative bow. And there you go. You've got your message in a bottle. We hope that all of our ideas for wedding favors have inspired you today. So to all you brides and grooms, congratulations. And thank you for joining us on Creative Juice. And we'll see you soon. Allison and Lucas are a young couple who enjoy winemaking and chilling out in their home. We bought this house about a year and a half ago, and this is our first home, so we've really run out of money and we still have a whole room left to do. They want to raise $1,000 to convert their spare room into a cozy space to accommodate their hobby. I've been making wine for about two and a half years. We really want to make this instead of just a hobby room. We want to make it kind of a warm, entertaining room. Cash in the Attic is here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania to help them raise some money. It's time to go through their house and find out what we can take to auction. Hey guys, Hi. you must be Allison. Yes. And Lucas. Yes, nice to meet you. Likewise, this is our expert, Tim. <laughs> hey, Hi. how's it going? Hey. So, guys, what do you want done to your home? Everything. Everything? <laughs> the woman wants it all, huh? You think you have enough stuff in the house to raise a thousand bucks? I hope so. Yeah, yeah hope so. Well, about there, maybe. Just want to remind you, once your items go into our van, they do not come out. Not going to shed any tears, are we? We're all right. All yeah. right. Ready to get started? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Excited. Aha! Home sweet home. Wow. It's our house. This is where the magic happens, right? It's this nice, is it. nice. There's a lot of interesting items in here, but you know what? 
My eyes are gravitating towards that very happening backyard. Yeah, we grilled out last night. You missed it. Grilled out last night without us? Hey. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Tell you what, can we start back there? Yeah, let's check it out. All right, guys, let's go. All right, let's go see it. Wow, I'm digging this, guys. Hey, great backyard. Yeah, very nice. And it seems, Tim, that there's a lot of items it's, here we could yeah, look at. What's I, under here? I always like when something's covered up. <laughs> Aha! Uh, this must be Allison's, right? Yep, it's my hair dryer. <laughs> it's not your hair dryer. <laughs> That's an air compressor for a nail gun or whatever other construction equipment you're using. Everyone has a big old air compressor around. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Well, why, why do you have this? When I got a, out of college, I started construction. And but all these power tools, those are for framers, and I'm, I'm not framing houses, so I don't need them at all. This is something that you wouldn't anticipate would go to auction, but actually, Actually, power tools like this are popular because you can get them on the secondary market. The air compressor? I can't wait to sell it. I don't know what it does. Compresses air. Why Why would you need that? It wouldn't be good for sustained use. It's just for those quick bursts of air for a nail gun, that sort of thing. It's an industrial type tool and we're going to need some craftsmen at the auction to bid this one up. So Tim, say we get the right bidders in the house. How much could this go for? $150. I'm very pleased that the air compressor is being appraised for $150. It's about half of what I paid for it, and that's just fantastic. I mean, it's just sitting here under a tarp in your backyard. Can we put it in the van? Yeah, yeah let's put absolutely. it in the van. All right. Hey, let's go. So, Allison, you have to carry this out to the van. Oh, forget it. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> no way. Now, uh, yeah. you, you know, for, for mortals, this would be pretty heavy. And it is heavy. And, ah. oh my Whoa, God. look at you, John. <laughs> Hundred and fifty bucks in the van. Once it goes in, it doesn't come out. Fantastic. You know what? Can we find some lighter stuff? Well, we'll try. All right, let's do it. Let's go. So uh, we got to find some more stuff and some lighter stuff. We got a lot of work ahead of us, guys. Hey, you're sitting on something oh, here. Oh, sorry. okay. Sorry about. <laughs> okay. Now, wh what's the story with these? We got these when we lived in our smaller apartment. Mm -hmm. but they're kind of in the way here. Really? Just in front of the fridge? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have thought that. The bar stools are uh, orphan furniture now, so they have no place to go, no place to stay, and we'd like to get rid of them. What I love about them is that they've got this pseudo 1950s look, and the chrome and the black, the decorating style, that's what's really hot right now. The bar stools are pretty generic. They're from a warehouse, and they've got a great design and shape. That's what's going to sell it. Say the uh, auctioneer really pumps them up, gets the crowd going. How much can they bring at auction? About $50 for the pair. Wow. Really? Fantastic. Yeah, that's a lot. I wouldn't have thought that. <laughs> I'm surprised we could get 50 bucks out of the bar stools. I really wasn't expecting more than five bucks, 10 bucks. Allison, Lucas, we can put them in the van then? Let's get them out of here. Absolutely. Excellent. Hey, tell you what, you know what? I want to chill out. Why don't you guys carry them out, okay? <laughs> ah, I like it this way. Although Lucas and Allison don't have a lot of stuff, we also managed to scrounge up a wooden lamp and an assortment of unused power tools. I'm a fanatic, old cash in the attic. I'm a fanatic, old cash. You know, I could do this all day. Who says this? Is it yours? It's mine. Yes, it is. Do you play? Uh, I used to when I was when I was younger. When was the last time, honestly, you played this, Lucas? I haven't played it continuously since my childhood. It no longer had a place in my mom's home, so I, I took it in and still have a lot, of, a lot of sentimental value, even though I don't play anymore. So it's a big old paperweight for the moment. As of right now, yes, unfortunately it is. One of the things about pianos, all of the information is actually hidden underneath. There's a serial number here. This would give us an idea of when the piano was made. Also, you can see here, made in the USA, the company name, and you've got all of your warranty information. But but it's not a Steinway. Steinway would be the benchmark, and it's an upright. That also holds it back. If it were a baby grand or a grand piano, then the value would be more. But if you wanted to sell it, could sell it off. The piano is not mine, so I really have no say whether we sell it or not. Tell me it's going to bring some money. How much could it bring? I would estimate this at about $200. Not bad, Lucas. How are you feeling about that figure? I don't know, I'm, I'm a little questionable because it, it's a lot of sentimental value and I'd still like to learn to play the piano. Well, tell you what, you guys need a thousand bucks. Can we revisit it if we don't get close to the target? We can revisit the piano if we're, if we're not at the target. So, we have more stuff we can look at? Yes, we do. Lead the way. Lucas can't seem to part with his childhood piano, but will Allison step up to the plate? I don't know. If you're attached to the piano, I'm not sure if I'm willing to let go of my item yet.
This program is brought to you by Pep Boys. Pep Boys does everything for less. Call 1 800 Pep Boys. When the light comes on, just come in. Pep Boys. This week, it's the Pep Boys Presidential Tire Event. Buy one tire for as low as $29.99. Buy any two tires, get a free oil change. Buy any three tires and get the fourth tire free. Get a Castrol GTX do it yourself oil change now just $11.99. When the light comes on, just come in. Pep Boys. Does Call 1 800 Pep Boys or visit pepboys.com. Right? We all need people who will be there for us in life. People who say, We're with you no matter what. At Wachovia in Wells Fargo, we're with you when a house turns into a home, me, when a passion becomes a career, when a relationship turns into a lifetime, and when all the hard work finally pays off. We're with you when you need someone to stand by you. Wachovia, Wells Fargo, and you. Together, we'll go far. What will you find in a glass of silk? Smooth vanilla flavor. With zero cholesterol. And the power that's made from one of nature's perfect proteins that can help your heart and fortify your entire body. Silk, vanilla, chocolate, and original. Strength in every pore. Hi, I'm Julian Michaels. Want to jumpstart your weight control program? Try my 14-day cleanse and burn. Use it to kick off any sensible diet and exercise plan. Julian Michaels, 14-day cleanse and burn. Get it today. Enter DIY's ultimate man cave sweepstakes and you can win 50 grand to create whatever man cave pops in your head. Presented by GMC Sierra and these sponsors. Enter daily at DIYNetwork.com. If you're a real estate agent in New York City, you're selling luxury. And we actually design to give you a view of the Empire State Building. You're selling celebrity. This was Annie Leibovitz's. You're selling status. Legends and royals at 52 <laughs> East Fourth. Two successful upscale firms navigate the high-stakes world of luxury real estate. They're not selling real estate. They're selling New York. Series premiere Thursday, March 18th at 9, 8 central on HGTV. Allison and Lucas are a very enthusiastic couple, and they do have some valuable items. They just don't have a lot of them. And if we're going to hit that $1,000 goal, we have to find more stuff. Okay, no, this isn't a good show. This is even...